Hey guys, welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. 2024 is here, which means the game is entering year 4 of release, and having made my updated best teams video, I thought it would also be good to make a new version of my top 10 best characters video in light of there being quite a few meta-changing units that came out throughout version 3 and early version 4. Just like I mentioned in my team video, Genshin has a lot of characters now. Naturally, it will get more and more difficult to ascertain which ones to prioritize when we're approaching 80 playable ones with more to come. So the angle I'm taking with this video is not necessarily which units are the absolute strongest, but the ones that give you the best bang for your buck, as in, units that either can do a lot of things or do a few things really well, but those things are integral to completing the game's content. Basically, it's going to be half meta, half comfort, if that makes sense. And as per usual, I know most of you are going exhausted of me saying this for every top 10, top 5, things of that nature, but god forbid I exclude someone's favorite character from these videos, so for the umpteen time, just because I do not include a character on this list does not mean they're bad or not worth using. The upcoming choices are who, in my opinion, are a good fit for any player, whether new, a veteran, free-to-play, pay-to-win, casual, hardcore, what have you. This is intended to be as general as possible. I can't include all 70-something characters in this video that defeats the purpose of a top 10. Finally, this list is not ordered. It's not 10th place to 1st, just 10 characters. Anyway, without further ado, like always, let's begin with two honorable mentions. First honorable mention will be Nilu, a Hydro character with the most unorthodox playstyle, though said playstyle just so happens to be one of the strongest in the game when built correctly. Through usage of her modified Dendro course, Nilu can dish out exquisite damage against isolated and clusters of enemies, while having a fairly low investment floor to get going, but a remarkably high ceiling. I had half a mind to put her in the actual top 10 in light of being so powerful, but while her niche is usable for virtually any combat scenario one can think of, I think the restrictive, albeit completely justified nature of her team compositions only permitting Hydro and Dendro characters is something that may get in the way of comfortability, especially for new players who don't have a lot of units to play with. This in no way undermines her value. If I could make a top 11, Nilu would definitely be pushed in. Easily one of the best parties in terms of DPS, and with there being only Hydro and Dendro, you could face roll over the keyboard and achieve bloom reactions without worrying about missing timing. More than deserves an honorable mention at the least. Second HM will be Kokomi, essentially becoming the modern day Zhongli in the eyes of many. Kokomi's value stems from how stable of a character she is. Though you're practically certain to pay a DPS cut when using her over other top tier Hydra supports, it's compensated through better survivability, both off-field and especially on-field. Kokomi has continued to receive indirect buffs through the addition of new characters, and has now even found a veritable reason to be used as the main DPS unit when paired with Arena. At the same time, I think with how stacked the Hydro roster is, and given how other healers like Baiju and Jin have substantially increased in usability, Kokomi is becoming more and more of a comfort pick and less of an optimal one. She is a fantastic unit if you like to autopilot through the game, but there are just so many exceptional Hydro characters that, in spite of her many benefits, I'll leave her as an honorable mention. Still to this day, one of the best healers and general use characters in the game. Okay, now beginning with the actual top 10 list, and to repeat, this is not ordered. Our first choice of today is Xingqiu, holding fast to his position as one of the best characters in the game. The community affectionately gave him the moniker of Hydro Archon prior to Farina to highlight just how good of a character he was, especially for a 4 star. In a similar fashion to Kokomi, Xingqiu is starting to feel the pressure when it comes to optimal offensive capabilities, with other Hydro supports able to contribute far more DPS augmentation than he can. Be that as it may, he's still the reigning king when it comes to everything else. He offers the best Hydro reaction support in the game, due in part to being essentially self-contained, requiring no other teammate to function at his best. Meanwhile, his damage reduction and stagger resistance can also be seen as roundabout DPS, in that you don't have to dodge or switch off to heal as much compared to the others. He's definitely still the most party agnostic Hydro unit in the game, comfortably fitting into any Hydro team comp you can think of. Taser, Bloom, Freeze, Vaporize, National, you name it. So while he's no longer the strongest or even most optimal Hydro support in my humble opinion, he's still the most flexible and versatile, while offering just enough DPS support to where you can't penalize them for lack thereof. At least for me, the biggest virtue of Xingqiu is how consistent of a support he is. This guy's just too stable of a pick to not be put in the top 10. Second unit will be Kasuha, who is most certainly dominating the animal roster by leaps and bounds. It's almost inconceivable how strong this guy is considering he's a version 1 character, but there's a very good reason why. What has allowed him to increase in value over the past few years is that he took advantage of both the reaction meta and the newly emerging hyper carry meta by having abilities catered to priorities that could benefit either one. Being an animal character and having wide area coverage, he was a natural fit into any teams that capitalized on Swirl, and with his elemental mastery scaling, you could rely on him to do some very solid reaction damage, regardless of which one it was. Conversely, Kazal's ability to VV Shred and the bonus elemental damage he offers can supplement any hyper carry's DPS by a measurable amount, making him one of the most meta-resilient supports in the game, capable of buffing parties and singular units alike. 
He was debatably the earliest instance of effective hyperscaling and was for all intents and purposes far ahead of his time. On top of that, he's one of the best overworld units as well thanks to his area coverage and verticality aiding you in exploration and mob clearing. I don't see this guy getting powercraft anytime soon for sure. He's just such a strong and easy to use character. Next one is Fischl. Previously an honorable mention, she's now definitively one of the best characters in the game. I remember getting so much flack for putting her as the best Electro character in my best unit of each element, but you know what? I'm doubling down on that. Fischl is the best Electro unit in the game. She is without question the best Electro application, making her an easy addition for Electro-based reaction teams like Taser, Quicken, and Overvape. Like Xingqiu, the main draw behind Fischl is her consistency. She essentially has permanent uptime since you can refresh her elemental skill using her burst, alternating between the two abilities to keep boss on the field indefinitely, and her own damage is nothing to scoff at either. The only situation where she could somewhat struggle is in area coverage, but almost all the teams in which you would use her more likely than not carry someone who can do the AoE damage for her, notably given how well she synergizes with animal units like Venti and Kasaha. Next to Yaimiko, Fischl had to have been the biggest beneficiary of Dendro being added to the game. Additionally, being a prime support candidate for the new top damage Nivellet, her stonks are only going up. Fischl is a prime example of how broken a unit would be if they had no internal cooldown. I suppose while we're covering the power 5, let's talk about Bennett. The general consensus on Bennett is that while overall demand for him being in almost every team comp has decreased, in the teams that still make use of him, he's the literal heartbeat that makes them function. For me though, Bennett earns a spot in the top 10 for being far and away the most cost-effective character in the game. While the vast majority of 4 stars are evaluated as C4 or more often C6, Bennett reaches near optimal efficiency from C1 and you pretty much can throw anything you want on him without thinking. Pragmatically, the only thing he cares about is the base attack on his weapon and energy recharge. That is all he needs to start giving over a thousand attack and tons of healing for your party. This kid is still one of the best supports for how easy he is to gear up, how easy he is to use, and how he has the perfect balance of damage and sustainability to fuel any team that cares about attack. In fact, a conspiracy theory some of you have come up with is that Bennett is the reason so many units now have some other kind of scaling like health, defense, or elemental mastery because any attack scaler would instantly use Bennett and honestly, that's not too far off from being true. I feel like Mihoyo is intentionally trying to make teams that don't synergize with Bennett which goes to show you how stupid broken he is. If this was a top 10 video for free to place, this guy would easily be number 1. Might as well get the last 4 star out of the way, Shanglin. Shanglin's an interesting character. I initially considered not including her on the list because I felt like her usability has gone down in recent years, but with the addition of Linnea and Navia, it's come back up again. Shanglin's main reason for being good, apart from her Pyronator's absurd relationship with snapshotting and like Fischl also having no internal cooldown, is that she's the best abuser of Bennett. Wherever he goes, Shanglin follows. This has enabled her to be surprisingly versatile in many different teams, both free to play friendly and hardcore alike. Historically, Shangling's been a great slot for teams like Animal Hypercarry, Ride National, Child International, Overvape, and just recently, the pair came across two new units that could take advantage of them to high heaven. She works with Bennett because on top of snapshotting his monstrous attack buff, Shangling also grants Pyro Resonance for more attack, and her Pyronado helps a ton with the main weakness of most hypercarries being their lack of area coverage. Aside from that, she's one of if not the best non-hydro off-field DPS units in the game. There is rarely a situation where you're using Bennett but not Shangling. In other words, so long as Bennett's in the top 10, so is Shangling. The two of them are effectively a package deal. Let's get some new blood in here, or rather new water. Most of you guys know by now that I have a higher opinion of supports than damage dealers when it comes to RPGs, and for good reason. They use more often on average. But if I had to add one or two DPS units to this list, one of them would definitely have to be Nivellet. I know I'm beating a dead horse at this point having gassed him up to you a million times, but it really needs to be said. This guy's the biggest mean DPS power creep we've seen in a very long time. Virtually every other hybrid carry unit has a deficiency in something. Hu Tao's uptime could be a bit better. Linny has poor area coverage. Ayaka gets screwed if her target moves out of her burst. Shogun needs to stack up chakra for maximum burst. Shao kills himself if you don't have someone else to heal him. Nivellet doesn't really have a weakness. This guy has single target DPS, area coverage, extended uptime given he can fire 3 hydro pumps in one rotation, self recovery, ridiculous DPS scaling, he can swap to his party then swap back without missing a beat, unlike Shogun or Hu Tao who lose their buff if they do. There are other units who, in very theoretical conditions, can surpass him in damage, but he is by far the best when it comes to in practice. He's the most brain dead hyper carry in the game. Like I said in my team's video, Nivellet is so broken that when he came out, one of the best performing Spiral Abyss teams was him. Literally just him, no one else. Not only is he overpowered at base, but he can abuse almost all of the game's best DPS supports, Farina, Yela, and Kasaha Official. If you're a new player and are wondering which DPS unit to look out for in the near future, Nivellet, no question. Provided there are no hydroimmune targets, this guy will waste everything with a single left click. It's criminal how overtuned he is, especially in tandem with the next character. If Nivellet is the best on-field damage dealer in the game, then Verena might very well be the best off-field DPS support in the game. 
It boggles my mind how people even remotely thought she wasn't good. Like, there was a genuinely concerning number of players who disputed her strength and even called her bad. A single observation of her numbers and scaling should be all the evidence you need to the contrary. In terms of sheer power augmentation, Farina is second to none. In addition to supplying consistent off-field Hydra applications, she can give your entire party a total damage boost of up to 75%, far exceeding any other support's capabilities, which can increase to 100% at C1 and 124% at C3. She alone can condense two or even three units worth of DPS enhancements into one character, enabling you to field other units that can provide the rest. She's so powerful that she single-handedly made units like Noelle and Jean, two characters that struggle to find any meaningful use, become meta. She made Baishu, almost on par with Nahida, the best Dendro character in the game, in value. Farina is absolutely one of the best supports in the game. I'd go so far as to say she's in the top 3 best units in Genshin Impact, period. Yes, she loses points for being crucially dependent on a healer, but that's hardly a big price to pay on account of most teams bringing a healer anyway. She works for hyper K teams and reaction teams alike, powering up everyone to deal ludicrous amounts of damage while dealing ludicrous amounts of damage herself. And if you're ever in a pinch, she can switch to a Numa version and carry infinite sustain, so you never need to teleport to a statue or consume healing items ever again. Do not pass up this character the next time you see her. If you have Jean, Kokomi, or Baiju, then definitely don't pass her up. Enough gushing about the Hydra Archon, now let's gush about the Dendro Archon. Next character will be Nahida. Nahida wasted no time cementing herself as the Dendro unit of choice for almost every possible team you can think of, even after Farina elevated Baiju's usability. Based on speculation, there doesn't seem to be any new Dendro units coming out in the immediate future, meaning Nahida is at no risk of losing her spot. Like Farina, Nahida has Archon privilege. Amazing base numbers in that she can do quite a bit of DPS to the skill, especially with the burst. She can give tons of elemental mastery and scales off it herself. She has permanent uptime and fantastic area coverage with both the skill and burst, covering the entire space of a Spiral Abyss Chamber. She can be used on-field or off-field and be extremely effective at both as well. I think the best thing about her though is that she breaks the rules of the game. Though it's attached to a constellation and not in her base kit, the simple fact that Nahida can make reactions critically strike is just flat out cheating, and I love every bit of it. Overall though, she's one of those units who can do everything, with her only weakness being her lack of defensive utility which, considering everything else she can do, you can easily afford a party slot to bring in a tank or a healer. Nahida is the strongest character of the strongest DPS element. Even with the rise of Hyper Carries, Dendro will not be dwindling in value anytime soon. Being an Archon, I doubt Mihoyo will release anyone stronger than her anytime soon either. Also, let's not forget, her overworld passive is a massive quality of life convenience to have. One of the better ones out there for sure. Two more units to go. Second to last one will be Yelan. No surprise why she's on this list. She's basically Xingqiu who trades damage reduction, stagger resistance, and a bit of Hydra application for increased mobility, token crowd control, damage augmentation, and staggering off-field DPS. Yelan was one of the most influential characters to be released in version 2, despite version 2 being flushed with game-changing units like Shogun, Kokomi, and Yaimiko. She pioneered the double Hydra team with Xingqiu, and then in version 4 became part of the flex tape team with Jean and Farina, notorious for being a one-size-fits-all party for any on-field damage dealer. She is also one of those units whose constellations are fantastic for all facets of her gameplay. I know 5-star constellations are hard to obtain for many, but it is a thing to consider when evaluating how future-proof a character is. You can think of her as the middle ground between Xingqiu and Farina, and she can synergize harmoniously with either. Yelan was one of the most sought-after reruns in the game after people realized just how broken she would be, and I don't imagine her going away anytime soon. Final unit on this list will be I'll Hate Them. I was torn between choosing Nilu or I'll Hate Them for the other damage dealing unit, but ultimately I decided on the latter for having more units you can play with even if Nilu's damage dealing is a bit better. Having made why everyone plays I'll Hate Them not too long ago, the basic gist is that he can do everything you want from a Dentro on Fielder. Similarly to Novelette, he has flexible uptime whether you want to use him for quick bursts or extended fights. He has hyperscaling with elemental mastery making him do quite a bit of damage on his own and through reactions. He has decent area coverage with the follow up attacks from his skill and burst, and he has great dendro application. Best of all though, he works perfectly with the dendro archon herself, so all hate them is to Nahida when Nivellet is to Farina essentially. He and Nivellet are the on-field attackers while Nahida and Farina are the off-field buffers. Very strong character who can work for any and all dendro related teams, quick in, quick bloom, nilo bloom even. If you're looking for another on-field attacker besides Nivellet, I'll hate them isn't a bad choice whatsoever. Okay, so that concludes my updated list of top 10. Once again, I tried to make this as general as possible, and obviously there are units I neglected to mention like Zhongli, Venti, Child, Shogun, Lini, Baiju, Shinobu, etc. But emphasizing this one more time, just because I don't include a character doesn't mean they're not good or top tier. In the end, this is my opinion. You can make a case for someone being on this list more than another. It all comes down to circumstance. 
Either way, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Varsver and join my Discord server and check out my top 5 best teams video if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.